God has woken me up and been talking to me for the last hour, so apparently this is important enough that I need to get out of bed and speak it. 1 Timothy 4. The Spirit clearly says that in later times some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. Such teachings come through hypocritical liars whose consciences have been seared as with a hot iron. They forbid people to marry and order them to abstain from certain foods, which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and who know the truth. For everything God created is good, and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving, because it is consecrated by the word of God and prayer. We were having this conversation the other day in a uh, question and answer, and someone had, uh, had mentioned uh, GMOs, was talking about how our food has been altered and, you know, these kinds of things. And, and certainly our food has been altered. But in the world, they have a different way of focusing on things. In God, he has different things that he's focusing on. So he has said things like, we're, you know, we're going to drink poison and it's not going to affect us. So is it the poisons that he's concerned about or is it obedience that he's concerned about? And so once our heart is correct, then we're going to have true understanding. I've been having difficulty with wheat for many years. And immediately, if I take a bite of something that has wheat flour or white flour in it, I start coughing. And my body ends up having a reaction. I start drowning on fluid in my chest. I end up with a nasal drip. It just is not fun. And as we've come together as a body to discern what we're supposed to be eating, which really began with my daughter being led by God to the scripture in Acts, where Paul is telling the Gentiles to abstain from blood, from eating meat with blood in it. So as we began to investigate what that actually meant, we realized, well, the animals are supposed to be sacrificed in a particular way. Now, let me clarify what I mean by sacrifice. I'm not talking about sacrifice on an altar. I'm not talking about sacrifice to God because we don't do that anymore. That's not required anymore because Jesus is the once and for all sacrifice. What I am talking about, and the reason I am refraining from using the word slaughter is because when you talk about slaughtering an animal, you have no relationship with that animal. You have completely detached yourself from the fact that you are benefiting from the life of another creature. But when you say sacrifice, then you realize that that animal has sacrificed its life for you. And then you can understand who sacrificed his life for you. And then you have a relationship with that animal and you care about the way that that animal lived. What kind of a life was that animal given? In the word, we're told to care for the animals. Jesus even uses his love and care as a shepherd to help us to understand his love and care for us. How can we invoke that love and care if we don't treat others likewise, if we don't treat animals that way? The answer is you can't. You have to be brought into a place of becoming holy as God is holy. And if God doesn't treat animals that way and he uses animals and his relationship as a shepherd with animals to help you to understand his love for you, how can you say that you're growing in the likeness of God if you continue to consume animals who are mistreated? Now, God established certain ways that we are supposed to treat animals. He also established that he has a covenant with those animals. That's what the word says. He also established certain ways that the animal was to be sacrificed. And when it was sacrificed, it was supposed to be fully drained of its, of its life blood. We are not to eat the blood of animals, period. Fully drained of its blood immediately. Otherwise, what happens is the blood goes into other areas of the body and you can't get that blood out. And so we've decided to shop at halal markets. Are we going to catch Allah or something? Because that's what some unstable, weak-minded Christians are saying, that we're going to catch Allah, that we're supporting Allah. Listen, false gods are nothing. They are nothing. No one is supporting Allah. Should I shop at a kosher market where I support those who add to the scroll and, and reject Jesus Christ? Unstable False Christians are more comfortable with that than they are with Muslims who actually believe in Jesus Christ. That's kind of bizarre to me. And in fact, that lie runs so deep. The lie runs so deep that they must support an ethnic group in order to invoke blessing in their covenant. That they would stand by and watch them murder people and not even question it. Give their approval of murder because anything that ethnic group does is okay. If that's how you feel, this is not the channel for you. 
we as a body have chosen to go and shop at halal markets because Muslims obey more of God's scroll than Reformed Jews. They have not altered God's lunar calendar in order to accommodate to some sun calendar in the Catholic Church. They maintain high integrity in their standards of how they treat animals and how they sacrifice those animals. They do not defile their food and they have high integrity in their standards on how they harvest and what is to be involved in that food. Certain things, certain items that that people just, uh, you know, in the food industry, no big deal. We don't have to put that in the ingredients. We don't have to disclose that. They maintain high integrity. So going back to the story regarding wheat, I've always had these very severe reactions to wheat and they've increased as the years have gone on. And not only to the coughing and the fluid in my chest, but also to rashes in my skin and, you know, things like that. So my body clearly rejects it. Now, there are people out there who are going to tell you all kinds of things, GMOs. And, you know, there's this other doctor, you know, who I think came out of Loma Linda. His name's Dr. Gun 3. He tells you about all the foods that you can't eat, right? You can't eat lectins. People have been eating beans for thousands of years, but all of a sudden you can't eat lectins. Lectins are bad for you. Nightshade vegetables, those are out too. Boy, God really messed this up, didn't he? Come on. The word tells us this is going to happen. There's nothing wrong with what God created. Something else is going on here. And as it is, that something else is that we've disobeyed him and we've not maintained strict standards with regard to what we're doing, with regard to harvesting. What do you think happens when you uh, employ a machine to harvest your grain? You're going to end up with a lot of stuff in there that's not supposed to be in there. We were supposed to have a relationship with the earth. We were supposed to have a relationship with growing and harvesting our food. That's what got established. And then we decided to become uh, civilized. So smart. We're just so smart. So evolved. So I've tried organic flowers. I've tried all different kinds of flowers. I also purchased, you know, whole wheat berries, organic whole wheat berries so that I could mill my own grain and make my own bread. And I still had reactions. But I noticed when I was going to the halal market and I had purchased naan or I had purchased pita bread that I wasn't reacting to it. So I decided on this last trip to the market that I would purchase uh, their whole wheat flour. And lo and behold, I'm not having any reactions. Turns out I don't need a gluten-free diet. I don't have an allergy, which I really had some trouble with that, you know, thinking like, why, why would God make certain foods and then say, well, I'm not going to allow you to tolerate this and I'm not going to allow you to tolerate that. That's not a thing. Something else is going on there. Now, do I need to go and focus in, you know, sometimes, it, sometimes this can become kind of like conspiracy theory, right? Like people can start getting so overly involved with what the government is doing and what the FDA is doing and what they're allowing and they're just killing us and killing our food. Well, yeah, we kind of know that, but that's not the issue because if God says you're going to drink poison and it's not going to affect you and you're not defiled by something that comes, goes into your body, but you're defiled by what's coming out because it's coming from your heart, then there's a different standard here. It's not about needing to engage in certain rituals. It's not about needing to maintain some sort of rigidity or even blame certain groups for what they're doing. It's about us. We're not punished for what other people are doing. We're punished for what we're doing. If we do not maintain high integrity as to what we are ingesting, which has been used as a metaphor to help us to understand doctrine, if we're ingesting defiled food, if we're ingesting defiled doctrine, we're going to be punished. We're going to experience consequences. In addition to that, if we're eating the blood of animals, which God has clearly said, and we're not in obedience to God, then that's what defiles us. That's what we're being punished for. So let me tell you this. So I, you know, when I was very ill, all I ate was beef. That was literally the only thing that I wasn't reacting to. And towards the very end of my illness, I couldn't even eat that. I started to react to that. And recently, so that was years ago, and recently, when my daughter brought this to the assembly with regard to what God was showing her, I had meat in my fridge. And so as we were discerning this, I was trying to understand, okay, where are we going to be shopping and what does God require? We had even considered, okay, so we take the meat out and then we, we drain it ourselves in the sink and I just could not get that blood out of the meat. And it just made me so sick. I mean, I'd been eating meat, all meat 
for many, many years from the regular grocery store. And all of a sudden, I'm so disgusted that I can't even eat it. Well, once I was made, once it was made known to me that I needed to obey in a particular way, God took it off my tongue. Now I'm being held accountable. So I couldn't even eat it. It's not about your diet. It's about obedience. It's about obedience to what God has said and about what he is demonstrating for you in eating defiled food. If I'm eating wheat that is bleached and it's harvested by a machine and there's no accountability as to chemicals being used on that wheat, pesticides, modification, you know, the harvesting process, everything just goes in and gets ground up. It so happens that God requires me to obey and to pay attention to what I'm putting in my body. Everything does not go. But again, it is for the purpose of obedience and my understanding about defiled food. If you understand that, you're not going to get tripped up by sales pitches that say organic, non-GMO, gluten-free. You're not going to be deceived by all of that. You know, for years and years, I had all the money to be able to buy all of that stuff. And I still was having so many reactions. If only I had known that what God actually requires is obedience. And then he will lead me into that obedience and being in good standing with him. And then he will bless. I would have saved myself so much grief. So I do understand when people, when people are focused on certain things because that's what the world is teaching you. Oh, GMO, organic, you know, all of these things. Look for these labels and, and that kind of thing. This is a defiled, it is a corrupt industry. You already know that. Seek for tr- first his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. If you pursue what it is that God wants from you, what he has established, He's going to bless you and he's going to lead you into understanding. It's not what comes from the outside that defiles you. It's what's coming from your heart. If what's coming from your heart is that you want to obey God, he will lead you to obey him. There are no food restrictions for everything God created is good and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving because it is consecrated by the word of God and prayer. Nevertheless, your heart needs to be in the correct spot. So if you are in obedience and if you are in a place where it, it, it is a value to you that animals are taken care of, that the blood is drained correctly, that those who are growing and harvesting your food are not defiling it in any way, he will lead you to that. And it just so happens that Muslims maintain high integrity with regard to these things. As far as I can see, they do not sell out. They maintain high integrity in this regard. If only Christians did the same. I'm so disappointed. I absolutely know 100% that God's word, that the Bible is the true word of God. And I know that Christ is the son of God. So I am not for a second saying that Islam is the true religion. I know what I know and where God has brought me. But I am so disappointed that those of us who have the truth accessible to us, have become the biggest idolaters on this planet and that we don't maintain integrity whatsoever in this regard. That we would at this point go and give full approval for the persecution and murder of people who are actually doing this. Why do you think they're being so oppressed? Why do you think they've been so oppressed for so long? Do you think maybe we have something to learn? Do you think maybe we have an obligation to stand up and defend the oppressed like the word actually says? I'm so disappointed that the very people who've been set apart to be God's people are behaving in this way. Everything that God has established, everything that he's told us to do, all boils down to a heart issue. It does not boil down to a gut issue. It does not boil down to a medical diagnosis, allergies. It does not boil down to that. It boils down to a heart issue. That is what he's working with all the time. Please discern the things I've said with God.